Hey fabulous fourth graders, today we are going to talk a little bit more about writing with quotation marks and commas. So we are talking more about dialogue, get it? Talking about dialogue. Oh, Miss Bergram, super funny. All right, so I want you to turn your attention to the screen. We're going to go over some of those rules that you have already learned and refresh our memories before we start today's activity. Using speech marks. Before we look at speech marks, let's quickly review direct and indirect speech. Indirect speech tells the idea of what a person said. The exact words are not given. For example, the girl said that she is tired. Direct speech tells the exact words that were said. For example, I am tired, said the girl. In comics, direct speech is shown using speech bubbles. These visual representations let us know what is said and who said it. In other texts, such as narratives, reports, and newspaper articles, speech bubbles are not used. Instead, speech marks are. Speech marks are also known as quotation marks, and they look like this, or they can look like this. Just like speech bubbles, speech marks are used to show exactly what was said. Anything inside a set of speech marks is the direct speech. Here are some examples. Open your books, instructed the teacher. Let's go to the beach, said Sam. Within a sentence, the direct speech can go at the beginning, like this, or it can go at the end, like this. Sam said, let's go to the beach. Notice that no matter which order, a comma separates the direct speech from the person talking. There is a slight difference, however. If the direct speech is at the beginning of the sentence, the comma goes inside the speech marks. If the direct speech is at the end of the sentence, the comma is placed outside the speech marks. Direct speech begins with a capital letter, even in cases such as this, where the direct speech is in the middle of the sentence. Where direct speech ends the sentence, the full stop is placed inside the speech marks. This is the same for question marks and exclamation marks, as long as it is the direct speech that contains the question or exclamation. If the order is changed and the direct speech begins a sentence, these punctuation marks still go inside the speech marks. In these cases, the comma that normally separates the direct speech from the speaker is left out. Have a go at punctuating the following sentences. Be careful. One sentence has indirect speech, which means that it won't need speech marks. The sentences that do have direct speech will need speech marks and possibly some other punctuation. Pause here while you work. The first sentence. Here is the direct speech. Let's add in our speech marks. Then we need to add a capital letter to the beginning of the direct speech. Finally, a comma is needed between the speaker and the direct speech. The second sentence. Here's the direct speech, and so our speech marks go here. There is a question in the direct speech, and so we must use a question mark, and it must go inside the speech marks. A comma isn't needed because of the question mark. The third sentence. 
There is no direct speech in this sentence. Because it's indirect speech, no speech marks are needed. The last sentence. Here's the direct speech. And so our speech marks go here. A capital letter is already starting the direct speech, but we do need a comma. It goes inside the speech marks after in. Remember, if you use someone else's words in your writing, use speech marks. Easyteaching.net All right, fabulous fourth graders. I want you to head to your Google Classroom and you are going to answer the following Grimly. question for me, or I should say you are going to write the following question for me. Write four sentences that come up with a story. Within those four sentences, I need two of them to have dialogue. They can be, I want them to make sure that they are actually using dialogue. So you want it to be direct or indirect, you tell me, speech. But you are going to make sure that you are working hard with this. I want your stories to be fun and imaginative. Maybe you could think of something you saw on TV and you can try and write that as a story. Maybe you could think of a conversation you had with your parents last night or this morning. Or maybe you could think of a story you had with your sibling last night or this morning. So go ahead and think really hard, making a great, fantastic story. Remember, it's got to have four sentences, and two of those sentences need to have punctuation, commas, dialogue marks, quotation marks, whatever you want to call them, speech marks, but they need to be in there. So go ahead and get started on writing today, and I hope you all have a fabulous rest of your afternoon.